Thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'm Andres, and I'm going to present Pergamo, personalized pretty garments from Nanopilar and Pilar. Uh, digital clothing is fundamental to create realistic avatars. Uh, one realistic avatar to improve the experience in 3D applications like video games or uh, digital reality applications, uh, and even enable new applications like crypto trial. However, the behavior is very complex and everything is very complication expensive. You need very powerful computers and a lot of time to simulate a specific garment for very few seconds of simulation. So this is uh, one of the challenges of clothing. And there's another gap between the real and the digital world. Even if you can simulate, you, can, you have the time, you don't know the, the parameters of a specific garment from the real world to simulate it in a uh, virtual simulator. If you want a leather jacket, you don't know the bending parameter, for example, you have or you need a very expensive equipment to know the parameters and input them into the simulator. So uh, our work falls between two categories, 3D garment reconstruction and 3D garment animation. The first category, reconstruction, are the methods that can digitalize garments into 3D meshes. For example, you have a 3D scanner or a setup with multiple cameras and you can uh, scan the, digital, the real world and create a digital garment. However, they usually need very complex setups. For example, in the image uh, above, you can see how uh, they have uh, a lot of cameras for a single subject. And even if you can reconstruct a garment, you only have the reconstruction for one specific video or one specific pose. So if you want to take the same garment for different animation or for a video game or something that needs to be interactive, you, you need something else, uh, not only reconstruction. That is the second category, garment animation. These words can take a garment and uh, move it so that it uh, matches the specific motion or a specific pose. There are two ways to do this. The first simul uh, simulation, uh, you take the physical formulas, and you simulate, you run the computer, but it is very slow and you solve a very powerful computer. And the second one, uh, data driven methods that are faster, but you need a lot of data, and this data you need uh, to get it somewhere. So it is either simulated and it's not from the real world, or you need to have it reconstructed. So, as I was saying, the data driven methods require a lot of data, and if it is simulated, then the results of the data driven methods uh, are not going to be better than the simulated data. So, our proposal is to use uh, uh, real world videos so that the data is not uh, simulated, it is from the real world, and have it uh, be able to adapt to new animations. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Our objective is for a given pose, uh, get the 
Carmen, or that box. For example, we have a subject in, on the left with a specific post. We put that into a new resort and we get the Carmen on the right. Our data is only uh, monocular LED videos. Uh, we, we, we have this restriction, but this will enable the use of uh, phone cameras or web cameras, like we did in an example. We, what we are going to do is uh, create a data set using the monocular LED videos so that we can train the, the universe. So let's get back to it again. Uh, the first part of our project is the reconstruction method that will take the um, uh, RGB videos and create a digital version of, of the garment of the subject. And the second part is a garment uh, reversal that will be able to predict how that specific garment will behave for the uh, new process. Let's see how the first part works. The method transforms a template garment using an optimization. That is, we have a garment of a uh, template of the t shirt, and over time, uh, the optimizer will modify it uh, little by little until it matches the, the look of the garment in the video. You can see in this video how the wrinkles uh, match the wrinkles on, on the This is an overview of the reconstruction pipeline. Uh, let's see, let's see it one by one. Uh, the first half of the iterations in the finishing process uh, get a course matching of the of the target. And in the second one, we give the, opti the optimizer a bit more of freedom so that it can match the high frequency details like the case. So we start with the frames I started from the videos, and the optimizer will carry the information from one frame to the next. So there is not a global temporal coherence, but we have a bit of uh, coherence between uh, subsequent frames. Then we use the state of the art models to uh, now extract uh, some information, like the segmentation, so we can know which pixels contain the garment we want to reconstruct, the body pose, so that we know uh, the pose of the human, and the surface normals. This is uh, 2D information, but this is not 3D, it's not, it's not a mesh. This is only an image with the vector of the, of the normal of the surface. So how it works. We have a data driven model trained with simulated data from an existing data set. So uh, it's a participational well, transponder. Uh, uh, this lets the template stay close to uh, the simulated uh, t shirts. Then we apply a skinny copy it from the underlying body model. And then uh, we render the uh, normals of the mesh uh, as a 2D So we can directly compare against the target. To evaluate how good the reconstruction is, we have this uh, error function. 
the first time in the silhouette error, that lets the optimizer know how close or how far the outline of the reconstructed mesh is from the target. The normal error lets the optimizer know how different the surface, uh, surfaces are. And the last uh, time is a regular reflection method because uh, the, the problem is very difficult for a single point of view. You can have a lot of uh, deformations that look nice from one point of view, but if you change the camera, it doesn't make any sense. So the regularization is very important. So, how, how can the, the optimizer take information from 2D to the 3D? The use depends over rendering. And to understand what the difference of rendering is, let's see what uh, classical rendering is. Uh, classical rendering is, as you, as you all know, uh, take uh, information from the 3D scene and can create a 3D image. If you change the light in the 3D information, the light in the image will change. But you can go, uh, you cannot go uh, the other way around. If you want to change the normal in the 2D image, uh, the renderer doesn't know how to change the scene to, to match that change in the 2D image. Differential rendering uh, allows us to do this. If you, you say to the differential renderer that you want to change a uh, vertex or something in the image, it will know if uh, it has to change the camera or the, the mesh or whatever. Uh, we only use the normals in this case, but there are other words that use the shading and lighting and other. So let's see again the reconstruction pipeline. We start with some parameters that are what the optimizer will change using differentiable functions like the original encoder and the scene function. We get the mesh. This mesh is input into the differential renderer, and we get the 2D image of our optimized uh, mesh. We compute some regularizations and finally we have a loss function. Because the whole process is differentiable, a change uh, and the, the loss function can inform the, the parameters how they have to change so that the mesh looks uh, like the target. Then uh, in the second half of the iterations, uh, we add a per vertex offset. That is an independent displacement for each one of the vertices of the, of the mesh, of the optimized mesh. This gives a lot of freedom. So if you see the regularization is not good, uh, this is going to generate a lot of noise or even uh, nonsensical deformations. And now the reconstruction is, is complete. Let's see how it evolves over time. If you look uh, on the image in the right, you see how the uh, template starts modifying a bit. It gets a bit longer, and then suddenly the winters appear. This is uh, the difference between the first and the second part of the optimization. This uh, sample is from the path dataset. Uh, we use this to validate our data in, in 3D. This is a reconstruction on monocular, monocular LTV video. You can see how the fine uh, wrinkles on the t-shirts are reproduced on the, on the digital data. Here we, have, uh, here we have another example with the bigger wrinkles because the material of the t-shirt is different, but the hyperparameters of the optimization are the same. You, if, without changing anything, if you just change the videos, the results are different. The closest work to, to ours is monocloth cap. So we use it to compare, to evaluate how good our results are. They, they don't have a explicit layer for the garment. They have a single mesh for the body and the, and the clothes but we have a specific layer of the, of the garment, so we can independently work with, with it. And here we have another comparison, and that's monocloth cap. Monoperf cap runs on uh, real time, so it makes sense that the results are not very good, but the thing, uh, our results are uh, more detailed than monocloth cap. Now, let's 
let's see the second part of our work, the regression. We have a data set of a specific garment, but uh, we want to simplify the work of the regressor as much as possible because we use like 12 meters for, for each uh, garment because we want it to be light in the, we don't have the subject recording videos for days, so uh, our process is going to be small. If I the training process, we process a bit the, the data set, we unpose the, the garments reconstructed, and we take the difference to the template so that we only have to learn the offsets. Uh, this makes, it makes it easier for the readers to, to convert. Now, we have the post that will be the input of the regressor, but the dimensionality is very high. So again, we want to simplify it a bit. We use a post encoder from another Puris work so that the dimensionality is uh, reduced and the information is disentangled from the high dimensionality of the original post. Now we have a data set of uh, encoded poses linked to the respective offsets, so we can train our regression. This is just a standard deep learning architecture. So now this is the whole uh, forward uh, process. So again, uh, we start with a pose with very high dimensionality. We encode it so it is smaller. We use the regressor to predict the offsets. And then we do the inverse process of the simplification. So we take the template, we add the offset, and then we use the same function to have it pose. And like that, uh, we have reconstructed the t-shirts for the uh, input, input pose. When the training is finished, this can be applied on unseen poses. So let's see some unseen animation. You can see how the wrinkles make sense for the poses song. And they behave like the t-shirt from the data set we have input. So in conclusion. Our key contributions are a method that is able to reconstruct a specific 3D garment from a single view, uh, even with uh, videos taken from, from camera. We have learned a deformable model for the reconstruction so that we can simulate very fastly the, how that garment will behave for uh, new animations. And we have uh, circumvent the simulation to real gap because we we have simulated data for our data driven models, but we add uh, real, real world information. Uh, there are multiple directions to follow to improve our work. We don't, uh, we haven't implemented uh, a way to know about self collisions. So there are some parts, the unpits, for example, are very hard for the reconstruction to get right. We, only, we have only used one template for now. Uh, we will need more work to try for different environments. The regressor only works uh, with the pose because it is trained on a single subject. So if you want, if you want to also make it um, able to use different body shapes, we will need we will need to record more videos and it will escalate very fast. So. This is still something we haven't done. We heavily depend on the prior models for to extract the segmentation, the pose, the normals. So we are limited by what they are limited. And there are some extreme poses that sometimes can be reconstructed, that, that can be reversed uh, right. Okay, thank you so much for your attention. If you have liked uh, this work, uh, you can check out the website to know more. Uh, code will be published soon. Uh, it's not yet public, but it's, in, it's very close.
that we have time for uh, one or two questions. Okay. Um, so um, I'm just wondering, uh, yeah, thank you. So I'm just wondering if your method can be extended to uh, very loose coding. I mean, the problem of loser coding is probably like their work. Uh, you have quite lots of occlusion uh, among uh, different parts of the groups, right? Or maybe if your method can be extended to multi-layer of clothing. So like if you wear a t-shirt first and you wear a jacket on top of it, so what will be the technical challenges for doing so? Well, the challenge there is that the defensive renderer can, uh, if you can, if you don't input the information behind something, it can optimize for that. So if you have a jacket on top of a t-shirt, uh, there is no way to know how the t-shirt looks. So the defensive renderer is not going to be able to, to fix that part. Uh, that's why we use uh, the, the version of the encoder so that even if we can't fix it with the defensive rendering, we have something that it makes some kind of sense. But yeah, that's the occlusion is a, a limitation. But that's because but that's because your 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 data is from captured data, right? So if your source data is from simulated data, then you will have the information. So, so if, if your source data is simulated rather than captured. Yes. then you will have the inner layers information. So your method itself, yes. apart from the data gathering part, should be able to handle multi-layer uh, profits, right? So the, the regression you, yes, I, uh, we haven't tried, so mm -hmm. I think maybe it works, but we haven't, we haven't right. tested that. Yeah, so. Any other questions? Questions from uh, online? Right, then let's thank the speaker again.